October, November 2015, paper 4, variant 1, question 8. This is another radioactive question, so let's look at this nuclear physics chapter. Distinguish from an atom. What's a nucleus? What's a nucleon? Don't confuse both. Uh. Nucleus and nucleon are very, very different things. So in the atom, you have a bunch of electron levels, orbitals, whatever you call those. Right in the middle is a very, very tiny nucleus. That is the core of this whole atom. Okay, and there's electron clouds everywhere. They may be in a different shape. They may be round. I don't want to bother about that. So if we zoom into this nucleus, zoom in, what will we see? You will see that the nucleus is made out of all these things. What are these things called? Protons and neutrons, correct. Some are positive, some are neutral. But these are all called nucleons. Called aka neutron and proton. Those are all the nucleons also. How do you talk about that in a sentence? First things first, let's talk about the nucleus. This is going to be a small central core inside the atom. Like the brains of the atom, kind of. Not exactly, they can't think. But atoms together can make us think. Isn't that magical? Mm, okay, so the main keyword here, surprisingly, is small. If you check the mark scheme. And there's an emphasis on that based on a follow-up from your AS chapter that they emphasize that the nucleus is really, really very small in comparison to the atom. So make sure you mention the small. If you didn't, you won't get the mark for this. So this is B1 for a small central core in the atom. Nucleon are those things inside the atom. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, we know that protons and neutrons, so best to mention them as well. So we say that these are the proton and neutron particles. Where? Inside the nucleus. Those are what we define as nucleons. This one is three marks? Oh wow, two marks. So here is, if you talk about particles inside the nucleus, that's one mark. If you talk about what they are, protons and neutrons, that's another mark. Pretty interesting one. Okay, next. Next part, next part. Radon gas is a naturally occurring radioactive gas with a half-life of 3.8 of days. Okay, so that's our T half over there. I'm going to make a note. T half. How long it takes for half of the nuclei to, dec to decay or for the activity to drop to half? Activity is found to be 97 becquerel in 1 meter cube of air. Oh, this is a volume. Interesting. Why they give volume? Huh? Maybe later I have to use. Calculate the decay constant, lambda, in seconds of radon. So if we have, ooh, we have T half, over here, we have lambda. We can use that equation. This one, where is it? Uh? Do I have my equation somewhere? don't think I have it with me at the moment, but in the first page of every past year paper, you will see them write this down. Lambda equals to 0 0.693 over T half. Now, this one is given to you, so you can copy it. Or if you know the origin story of where this number came from, you will know that this is, is derived. Lambda equals to ln 2 over t half. Which one you use? I really don't care. Lah. But I would prefer usually to use ln 2 because it is more accurate. 693 is already rounded off. So you lose a little bit of information. Not too much though. So let's plug that in here. ln 2 over t half. What is t half? 3.8 days. So 3.8. Should I convert my days to seconds now or convert it later? Convert now. Lah, convert now. So this is 3.8 days. I want it to be converted to seconds. So this is what, uh, uh, a shortcut I always tell students. If you're not sure to multiply or to times, use your units to help you out. So you want to get rid of days, right? So days, you put at the bottom. One day, you want to convert to hours. So one day, 24 hours. Now if you look at this, days and days cancel out very nicely. So you're now you're in unit of hours. But you want seconds, okay? So you want to get rid of hours. Now we put hours down there so that the unit of hour will cancel out. One hour got how many seconds? One hour got 60 minutes. Each minute is 60 seconds. So that is you putting these two together. And yeah, you can write a shortcut. It's just 38 times 24 times 3600 will give you your unit in seconds. Don't have to write out this whole working line. It's just if you're not sure how to do this. So what 2.111 is your answer. Times 10, negative 6. 
Final answer, 2.1 times 10, negative 6. This unit chain, I call it a unit chain, is helpful if you don't remember formulas or you're not very sure how to deal with unit conversions. So this one is A1. And if you plug into the equation, that's C1. This is our golden equation in the data formula sheet. Formulae. Next. So now they ask us, calculate the number of radon atoms. Number of atoms means the N, giving rise to activity A. What equation has N and A in it? Haha, <laughs> this one is an activity which is proportional to N, or the actual value, lambda N. Lambda is a constant. So I guess we can plug all our values in now. Here is 97. Lambda is previously found to be 2.1 times 10 negative 6. N, I guess we time we gotta find that. So now we will find our value of N, which is 4.6 times 10 to the 7. I really like this activity equation because it's so easy, you just sub in. And you write equation, you get a mark. So you write equation, you get a mark. You sub in correctly, you get another mark. Wow, beautiful. Okay, now note that this is the number of atoms in where? This is going to be in go back to the earlier part radon gas is 97 becquerels in one meter cube of air so it's hard to imagine a container that is i guess this amount in one meter cube of air so in one meter cube this is the number of atoms of radon what color is radon i don't know i'm just gonna put dots okay so you can count the particles number of nuclei now the last part this is relevant for the last part so now they tell you, okay, so now you have a volume, a different volume. 2.5 times 10 negative 2 of air has one mole of molecules. Mole is another way of quantifying the amount of substance. So determine for the ratio in one meter cube air, number of radon atoms over number of air molecules. So that means I'm going to find what is the number of radon divided by number of air molecules. Now, the number of radon are in what? One meter cube of air. We already found that right here. In one meter cube of air, there will be this many number of radon atoms or number of nuclei. So we can just write that straight away down here. So this will be four. That's not my blue pen. Anyway, 4.6 times 10 to the 7 number of particles particles divide by air okay now the question is in that same one meter cube container how many air particles are there i don't know i'm just drawing dots we have to find a way to calculate it with this given information okay so let's settle down and look at this so if you have a volume of two when there is 2.5 times 10 negative two then you have one mole of molecule. Now, what does one mole mean? One mole is defined as 6.02 times 10 to the 23 number of molecules or particles. This is also known as the Avogadro constant, Na. So I'm going to use Na from now on because it's a lot of numbers to write. So in this amount of air, there's this many number of part molecules. So now in one meter cube of air, this is in meter cube. How many particles will there be? That is what we want to find. So we're going to do a little ratio here. So if you want to find the number of air molecules, then you say number of air. Here will be your uh, your, 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 your volume here uh, related to your number of molecules in one mole. So this will be Na divided by 2.5 times 10, negative 2. So this is the idea of doing some ratio. Lah. If this is this, what is this? So that is our ratio that we will now plug into the other equation. You can do it separately lah, or you can do everything in one step. I'm going to put them all in together. So here will be the Avogadro constant 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Divide by the volume. So 2.5 
times 10, negative 2. Okay, you so saw when you press calculator correctly, will give you 1.910 times 10, negative 18. That's a ratio. That's really, really small. What? Oh, so I guess it's not that dangerous. Oh, it's fine. So this will be 1.9 times 10, <laughs> negative 18. That's really small for a ratio. Oh my goodness. So one mark will be your final answer here. A1. The other one is if you talk about the, uh, finding the number of air molecules. So that's for this part. Uh, or if you wrote it separately, also can. Alright, so that is, that is the end of this. Okay, and on this question. So I think the tricky part here is if you know your physics, physics equations, you'll be fine. It's just maybe if you don't take chemistry or something, these moles and molecules might be a bit rusty or strange to you. Practice them, do more questions with them and make sure you... Uh, know how to play around with the numbers until you figure out what is correct. Okay, so that's all for this video. I will see you in the next example.